I talk such garbage to myself in the mirror, but like good garbage, like just like dancing and singing and doing just random shit. What's What's I wish they would teach young people, I mean obviously they cover the basics, but I wish they would teach young people more of like the soft skills. Um, and when I say soft skills, I mean like more like the emotional stuff. Like don't be embarrassed if you're interested in having sex. Ask questions, that it's not an embarrassing thing. And also don't be embarrassed if you don't want to have sex or if you want to have sex with the same sex or yourself or whatever the hell you want to do. Just don't make it so embarrassing. Um, and I think... It's hard not to make something embarrassing that everyone's been told is embarrassing. And even when you walk up and you stand, you're like, it's not embarrassing, it just gets worse. <laughs> like, so it's a bit tricky, but I think I would like for the conversation not to feel so guarded and like shameful, but rather informative. Um, and yeah, just teach a few of the, like, the soft skills. It doesn't have to be like how other people are saying, it's not always about the functional benefits, you're not having sex to have kids. Sometimes you're having sex just because you can. And sometimes you not because I'll fool you and that's fine too. Um, yeah, I wish they would teach people just to be more comfortable with the conversation and actually the act or lack thereof the act, you know. Um, I think there's stigma around menstruation. I really do feel like it comes from a, a patriarchal space where people are trying to like, control women's bodies. Um, I mean, a great example I have is when I when I was in high school. Um, whenever we used to do swimming, a lot of the black girls like can't swim on a period. And I remember the the PE teacher being like, "Just plug it up. Like we have tampons in the in the in the office. Go get a tampon and plug it up. Let's keep it going." And the one girl was like, "No, I can't. Like my mom doesn't allow me to wear tampons. She says it's it's too like suggestive or whatever." And I remember thinking to myself, "Okay, I don't have rules at home." Um, like that because we don't think like that but then when i was older i was like who has like planted the seed that a tampon is a suggestive thing it's not it's you literally just like how my teacher was saying you just plug it up and you continue with your life but because people want to control women's bodies they don't know they don't want you to even think about a penis anything that is even even a tampon that has nothing to do with nothing no, it's a no. They forever try to control your body, and I'm just like, this is crazy. So I do think that it comes from a control space, particularly patriarchy, trying to control how women see themselves and behave with their own bodies. Bizarre. Um, you would think that I bonded quite well when I was in high school because I went to a girls' school, but not really. I don't think you really like. I don't know. Like high school is weird. I think in as much as you have friends, you're all still trying to figure things out. And I mean, we're all still trying to figure things out now, but in high school, you're still carrying all like the baggage of your home life because you're living at home, right? And I grew up with my dad, so growing up in the house with just like a man and then going to an all-girls school, I'm carrying what he's saying or not actually saying with me to, to school. Um, but then when I went to varsity and I was in res, um, and I was like now mingling with the people from all around the country and from all sorts of walks of life and it's all women. Um, I think the conversation that we used to have in the common room was like my favorite. Like we talk about every and anything, laugh at like the crazy, like people were so insane, like so weird. And they come and tell us about their sex stories. And I remember sitting there thinking like, you guys just go around telling everybody your business. But it's so informative, it's so helpful. Um, so I really appreciated that. Um, I learned a lot vicariously through other people, um, which I think is always so great because then you don't feel like you're by yourself. I think the role of sisterhood with regards to menstrual health is, I guess, just to demystify the whole thing. I mean, everyone has a period, so why is it so embarrassing? What I actually want to talk about, and this is totally random, but it's like, you know how in women's bathrooms, and I find I do it all the time, is that when you have your period, you try to be as silent as possible. And it's like, this is the space where literally everyone walking in this door has a period. So why is it so silent? Like, trying to open the wrapper so closely. If we had that sisterhood where it's not like, 
where you don't feel like people are going to be saying something that you have in your period, which everyone has, literally everyone in the room has it, um, then it wouldn't be such an embarrassing thing. But yeah, I think I think we 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 have oh, like we've got some work to do. Um, but yeah, I just want I think sisterhood needs to just work at demystifying the period. I mean, everyone has a period, and yeah. Everyone has a period. Literally, we're not here. How we are even alive without people that have periods doesn't make sense. Um, I'm not sure how like sex ed can help with sexual liberation because I do think like liberation, not just sexually, but also just in your own body, um, and just being comfortable, like body positivity and all that type of stuff. It's not something that can necessarily be taught like step by step. Sure, we can give you the tools, but at the end of the day, you kind of need to figure it out by yourself because it, it's your body and you need to live in it. So things like sexual liberation, I don't know if sex ed is the medium that will help you get to it, um, but it sure can give you like a few steps on like destigmatizing sex and your menstrual health and just your general bodily health. Um, yeah, and I think sexual liberation is basically just being comfortable in your own body sexually, not just in literal sex terms, but sexually as whatever gender or sex you you find yourself in, um, or you identify as. Yeah. Top three. Number one is talk to yourself. Talk positively and kindly to yourself. Um, Personally, I enjoy the mirror. I talk such garbage to myself in the mirror, but like good garbage, like just like dancing and singing and doing just random shit. I remember once reading it in a book where this lady was saying um, she went to a spa or whatever um, and she went to the woman's section um, and in the, I think it was one of those like saunas where everyone's like naked and she said she felt so self-conscious but when she was there she saw two women who were, who were sitting on the other end and the one woman um like her boobs were like perky but she was having such a good time she kept like flopping it and making noises on the water and her friend was making was like laughing it and she she said watching that interaction and seeing someone who doesn't have what we deem as like the perfect body enjoying her body and making fun of it love that i think laugh at your body but not in a way that's hurtful for you. I mean, if you like to laugh, then obviously make fun of the different things. I mean, um, but still, obviously, talk positively to yourself. Um, I think take care of your body, and taking care of your body doesn't necessarily mean, like, being posted up at the gym five days a week. It literally means, like, making sure that you get enough rest, you drink your water, um, you listen to your body. I mean, if you're feeling sick, do something about it. If you're eating like, I don't know, three packets of jelly tots and you don't feel great, maybe don't eat three packets of jelly tots. You know what I'm saying? Listen to what the hell your body's saying. Okay. Gonna move you a little.